Evening Meetings As the meeting room occupied by our people was small and a distance from the central part of the city, it was thought best to secure for our Sunday and evening services a hall in a more favorable location and one capable of accommodating a larger audience. It is difficult in Copenhagen, as in all the cities of Scandinavia, to obtain a suitable place for meetings. The halls are mostly used for dancing, concerts, and theatrical entertainments, and they are rented at a high price. After some effort, however, the brethren secured a hall, which they assured us would meet the requirements. What was our surprise upon going to the place for service to find it in the basement of a building, in the upper stories of which were halls for dancing and places for drinking. The room was large enough to accommodate 200 persons, but contained seats for only half as many. It was quite damp, the moisture at times being plainly seen on the walls. One evening, while I was speaking, some young men from the drinking halls above, half intoxicated, gathered about the windows of our hall, by loud talking and laughing, endeavor to interrupt the meeting. They even thrust their heads through the open window, shouting into the room, If it is necessary to speak in such places, we will do so cheerfully. If in this rich and beautiful city there is no suitable room where the truth can be presented to the people, we remember that there was no room in the inn at Bethlehem for the mother of Jesus and that the Savior of the world was born in a stable. There were some in the audience who seemed deeply interested, persons of talent whose countenances I remembered, for they had been presented before me. These persons had been pleasure lovers, enshrouded in darkness and error, but God was permitting beams of light to shine upon them from his word. The arrows of the Lord were wounding the heart, that the sin-sick soul might turn to the great physician. I felt such an intense interest while speaking to these souls that I lost sight of my surroundings. I felt that some were in the valley of decision, and I longed to see them take their stand fully and decidedly upon the side of Christ." The Savior had purchased them by His blood, and He had given them precious talents of influence, which they had wasted and abused, and given to the service of the Lord's bitterest enemy. Now there was an opportunity for them to change leaders and to unite their interest with those of Christ's true workers. As I spoke, I felt the peril of souls, that some would decide from that time to obey the truth or would refuse the cross and reject the offers of mercy. We are to do our work in sowing the gospel seed as though each opportunity were our last to present Christ and Him crucified before those assembled. And we should speak to them in such tenderness and love, yet with plainness and fidelity, that though we never meet them again, we shall have done our whole duty. I spoke five times in Copenhagen. While I was glad to present the truth to the few who could be accommodated in our small meeting rooms, I would have been pleased to honor my master by bearing his message to a large number. I am far from being convinced that these small and obscure halls were the best places that could be secured or that in this great city of 320,000 inhabitants the message should be given in a basement room that will accommodate but 200 and this but half seated so that a large part of the congregation have to stand. When God sends our brethren help, they should make earnest effort even at some expense, to bring the light before the people. This message is to be given to the world, but unless our brethren have broad ideas and plans, they will not see much accomplished. While we should labor earnestly for the poorer classes, we are not to confine our efforts to them, nor should our plans be so laid that we shall have only this class of hearers. Men of ability are needed. The more intellectual ability is brought into the work. So long as the talent is consecrated to God and sanctified by His Spirit, the more perfect the work will be, and the higher it will stand before the world. The people generally will refuse the message of warning, yet efforts must be made to bring the truth before those of position and education as well as the poor and illiterate. 